Today, I'm going to do about $5,000 worth of AI project for free. And people are regularly looking for freelancers to do this on platform like Upwork or Fiverr. And they'll probably pay like one, two, or even $5,000 for AI projects. But today I'm gonna to go on there and pick a handful of real AI automation gigs, and I'm gonna build all of them for free. And most importantly, I'm gonna show you exactly how I would approach these. And I'll show you exactly how I would scope it, build it, and deliver it, uh, mostly using no-code tools like any 10 So let's do it. Okay, so let's see what we have here, and I'll scroll through and try to find a few good ones. Okay, so here's one that I think could be interesting. And here what I'm going to try to do is, obviously, if this was a real client, then I would probably have to need a conversation with that person to understand a bit more about the company, what they need, and what they're trying to achieve. But I'm just going to go off of the brief that they gave in Upwork. And here what they're trying to do essentially is that they're trying to get, uh, they're trying to scan their email, their Gmail account, their inbox, and see essentially if uh, if it's a support email. Now they want to store the results in a uh, database that is in their MySQL. Now for this example, obviously I don't have access to their MySQL, so I'm just going to use a Google Sheet. But essentially uh, every time that I'm going to have a nod that will send information back to my Google Sheet, uh, you would just have to replace that with their MySQL database. And so they're trying to scan for emails uh, that come through and see if this is a support email. And if it is, then they just want to label that email in the database. Again, for us, it's going to be a Google Sheet as a support email. If it's not, then it's just going to be a general email. And if it is a support email, they want the workflow to find possible answers to that question in their knowledge base and then use the AI to sort of uh, put together an email to be able to send a reply to that person. Now I can see here that the last step is not gonna to be to actually send the email, but just to have that answer to the email, the potential answer to the support email, uh, saved in the database, and then probably a human would come in and decide that this is a good answer, and then actually send the email. Which is actually pretty smart, you probably wanna have a human in the loop, uh, if you want to make sure that, you know, it's just not popping out garbage to send directly to the support tickets. So here they specifically mentioned that they want to have this built in NA10. So let's just do it. All right. So here in NA10 with a fresh new workflow. So the trigger for this is going to be to check every X amount of time. Uh, I guess this is a support email. So we're going to ch want to check pretty regularly. I'm just going to put every uh, 15 minutes. I think that sounds about right. Depending on the volume of emails they would get, which I obviously don't know, uh, that sounds like it would be about right. Obviously, if they're a big company and they get a lot more support emails, maybe we would uh, jump that up to check every couple of minutes. Uh, or if they don't get too much, then maybe we'll check a little less. Doesn't matter too much. I'm going to go with 15 minutes for this example. And then the second note is going to be to get the actual emails in Gmail. Now, because I don't know how many emails are going to come through within that 15 minutes window, obviously I'm going to try to get many and I'm just going to put maybe a bit of limits, but I'm not going to get just one message. I'm going to get uh, many messages, which is the one right here. I'm going to put a limit of uh, five just so that, you know, we don't overload with it too much. But again, it would just depend on the volume of emails that they tend to get uh, for support. So here we go. I just ran a test just to see that it pulls up perfectly and that should be good for this nod. So next up, we're going to try to see whether or not this email has been complete or processed already. And we're going to do that using the ID for that email. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to search for Google Sheets and we're going to have to get the rows. I'm going to find the Google Sheets and that's going to be the first one here. And so here I've done a test and just to add a bit more of mock-up information here, just email ID and the status. And here we're trying to check if the uh, status is complete because if it is obviously we don't have to treat that email so the next step is going to be to add a nod to make sure that we have the two path so in this case if the status is complete then that would be a yes obviously in our case i didn't put complete so this will be false and that is outputting properly and so if the email is not complete, then that's when we're gonna to want to add the row to the Google Sheet. So we're gonna to want to append the row. That's gonna be the same Google Sheet. And we're gonna map this out. So I'm gonna take the previous node that we had in Gmail. It's actually if the, here is the ID. And for the email, I'm just gonna grab the subject line here. And we wanted to add a processing status. So that's what I'm gonna do right here. Obviously that's not dynamic. That's just gonna be me adding the text processing right here in the status column. So we're gonna test this out and this should be working pretty well here. So we have uh, the subject line, the ID, and then the status as processing. Okay, and the next step is gonna be to identify whether or not this email is a support email. And that's really where AI uh, really shines in these situations because it's gonna have a brain to actually understand uh, the context of the email, just like a human will, and actually understand whether this is a support email or something different. And so that's what I'm gonna do here. And I'm gonna use a just basic LLM uh, chain because I don't really need anything else super complicated. It's just going to be a basic 
a call to a LLM, in this case, ChatGPT, to ask it to analyze the content of the message and then just uh, tell me whether or not this is a support email. So the prompt I'm gonna use is pretty basic and I'll let you sort of pause to see it. It's pretty standard and you could probably go a bit more fancy here. And obviously if I actually had the data from this client, I could see the kind of emails they get through and sort of refine it. But for this, I'm just gonna keep simple and this is what I would go for. Here, let me pop it up so we can see it a bit more. But essentially I'm just asking it to read the email and understand whether this is a customer request or a general email. If it is a support, then the output would be support. If it is a general email, then it would be just general. So let's test it with the email that I pulled out randomly from my inbox that is not a support email. And let's just see what it does. And I forgot to hook up the model, so let's just do that. Okay, we got it now. So let's test it out. And we have an output of general, which is exactly what I was looking for, because again, the email that it pulled was definitely not a support email. Uh, so that is what we wanted. Here again, we're gonna have to have a if not to determine whether the response was uh, general or if it was support. So if it is support, in this case, it isn't, as we determined before. So if it isn't, then we don't have to do anything. We just have to put it back in the Google Sheets, append the row. And I'm gonna make sure that we match on the ID, that we recognize the new entry that we had before, and then we just add the new status, which in this case is gonna be complete. And actually, I just forgot to add the type row here, but we just need to match on the ID and then we need to update the status to complete and then the type to whatever we had before, in this case, general. Now, if it was a support email, that's when we would generate the answer that we wanted for that support email. So here, there will be many ways to go about this, depending on whether the client would have a rack system already in place or whether or not their knowledge base was already in a particular software or not. For this example here, I'm just gonna use a um, AI agent and assume they don't have anything in place and I'm gonna add a few tools to just make a very simple version of what this would look like. So we're just gonna use any ChatGPT model. I'm gonna set a very simple memory. And here what you would do probably is that you would create a vector database of their knowledge bank where they have all of their documentations and all of the answers that the AI would need to find to be able to respond to that support email. Um, Obviously, I'm not gonna create this because I don't have any of that knowledge that they have, but that would be sort of the tool that you have here as a tool. And here you would define the prompt to be essentially just looking into that database, into that vector database, uh, find the information that the client is looking for. So we're just gonna be pulling out the information, the, the message from Gmail, and then just search in knowledge base for an answer to that question. And the last step is gonna be just to, again, append the row. And here, this will be the last step. I would match on the ID of the email, and I would add probably a last um, row here for the response message, just update this. And that would be essentially whatever the AI comes up with. We would implement it in the Google Sheet, update the status to complete, and then have a last nod to send them an email or notifications, whether that's via email, Slack, or whatever they use to get their notifications. We would send them a notifications that a new support email is ready for being sent and that they can go in and manually just send it. And that's pretty much the first one. So obviously there'll be a lot of testing and refining to do here, but based on the limited information that I have from the brief, that is pretty much how I would do it. Okay, so here's the next one. And that's a pretty good example of the situations where the client is thinking about a solution. That's it much worse than what I would actually suggest. Uh, so what they want here is that they want to be able to give to the clients a prompt uh, to give to ChatGPT in order to be able to sort of help them do their branding on LinkedIn. So they wanted an AI expert to give them a custom prompt so that the client goes on to ChatGPT, enters the prompt, and essentially gets the answer to all of those questions. Now, for many reasons, what I would actually suggest to this client is not to create a custom prompt, but to create a custom GPT. And I've done a full video on this, on how to create this for your clients, actually, so that you, know, you can essentially do what I'm about to do um, a lot better. But I'll just give you the gist of it and the different steps. Essentially, you would go into ChatGPT and create a new GPT. So in this case, again, the client is wanting to train the AI on the exact framework of the program that they have for this LinkedIn uh, course or whatever. Uh, obviously, that's not what a custom prompt would do, but that would be what a custom GPT does. So when you create a GPT, obviously what you can do is that you can upload a bank of knowledge and essentially here, that would be whatever the client has for its course content. Uh, we would upload a bunch of documents, a bunch of PDFs, a bunch of Google Doc uh, that would sort of go through everything that they know and everything that they help the client with. And that knowledge bank will allow the custom GPT to find the answer to those questions and help the client to do all of this. So that will be the first step, just to upload all of the knowledge bank that this client has to the knowledge here. And then for the custom prompt, 
let me just kind of engineer something here. Okay, so I just kind of whipped out a prompt here and this would need probably uh, the most refining and testing uh, depending on how the client wants the you know custom GPT to re reply and the kind of information that we really want to give to the clients that they have for the LinkedIn course. But essentially, just to walk you through the different parts, uh, I just sort of generally describe the task for this GPT, a bit of context. You know, I am a LinkedIn coach and I'm helping people with their LinkedIn accounts, that kind of stuff. Uh, some examples that could be useful always. A persona, that's uh, you know, a bit of an extra step, um, but that could be useful. The format of what uh, we're expecting specifically for uh, the LinkedIn post. So that was one of the things that we want to hear is to create real content posts. Obviously, that would be fed by all of the templates that the client has for the clients, but it would be good to give them a precise format for those. A ton of voice, that would be, again, for the GPT, not really for uh, what we want the client to be doing in the post. That's a pretty good start. Again, that would be something that we refine uh, with the client. A conversation starter could be uh, to ask them about the target audience. That would be a good way to start. Or maybe what is their objective on LinkedIn. That would be the gist of the initial setup for this GPG. Again, the refining would have to be done with the client, but that would probably cover most of what we want to do here in this project. Okay, so here's the next one that I think is interesting, a bit more complex. And here, obviously, I would need a lot more information. But let's just go with what we have here. Essentially, what we're going to do is that we want to extract some content from a PDF. That's going to be a pretty complex document because that's going to be a scientific research, I assume, some kind of scientific PDF. And based on that, we're going to create content with all kind of media here in order to have a mix of text, images, audio, video. And then we're going to publish that content on the blog now. Lots of different ways we could go here. Obviously, uh, the mix of media would depend on a bunch of things, but but let's just try to cook something up. And here we're going to have a lot of AI included. And every time you're going to have some AI in a workflow, you just increases the chance that it messes up. And you're also just going to spend a lot more time refining the prompting and refining uh, sort of the outputs and just testing a bunch of times to see if the output is acceptable. I mean, you're going to see that the actual workflow is not that complicated. Uh, but again, the quality of the output is going to be the things that we're really looking at here and refine as much as possible. So obviously, we need to have a bit more context about, you know, who this is for and what sort of things we're expecting at the end. But let's just go with it for now. And so here, the first step, obviously, is going to be to actually download the PDF. Now, I don't know what those PDFs are going to be. I'm just going to assume that I'm going to have to make a HTTP request to download those PDFs. So obviously, I don't know what the URL is going to be. I'm just going to put a mock-up URL here. And I'm going to want to have the response format to be a file. Now, maybe it's actually a lot more simple than this. And we have all of those in a Google Drive. So that could also be uh, the step here, just to download the file from Google Drive. And now that we have the PDF, we just need to extract the text from the PDF so that an AI can actually read and understand what's on it. So very simple, we actually have a extract from file. And here we'll talk about extracting from a PDF. And now that we have the text, we can send this directly to an LLM. So I'm going to define the problem here. What I'm going to do is I want to pull out a bunch of FAQ from this paper. So essentially that we have this sort of knowledge base from this PDF and just simple questions and answers. Uh, that would be something that we can then turn into some kind of content and that would be something that we treat later on. So that would be the prompt and the last thing that I would need to pull out is the actual dynamic content from the not before, but I would just pull this out here. I'm going to go with GPT-40. And so again, the next step is going to be to create some kind of rich content. Now, obviously, there's different ways that we can do this, but I'm going to go pretty basic here and I'm going to use OpenAI. And I'm just going to use DALI-3. Obviously, it's not the best one right now, uh, but just for the sake of this example, I'm going to use this model here. I would probably want to go and use a better model depending on the client's budget, their needs, and exactly what kind of content and images we want. But for now, let's just go with it. And I will just have a simple prompt to generate an image based on the text that we had before. Now here, the client is looking for a mix of text, image, so we already have that, but also audio and video. Again, depending on budget, we can use something like 11 apps. It looks like they do have that. Or we can use something like Agen for the videos. That would essentially be the next nod that I would build. So I would just make HTTP requests to the API for those different tools. Obviously for this example, I don't have it, but let's just go with it. Let's just say this would be the actual uh, 11 labs audio. And let's say the next step would be to actually create a video. Again, I would make an HTTP request to something like a gen. And I'm just going to do video gen by a gen. And the next step is going to be to take everything that we have generated, the text, the image, the, geo, the audio, the video, and compile all of this into a single HTML so that we can actually post it easily on the blog later on. So that's going to be a set node. And here I'm just going to run this function here, which essentially does what I told you, which is going to compile everything that we had, put this into an HTML format. That will be what I need to then pass it on to my CMS. Let's just assume that they use WordPress. 
and create a post. And that would essentially give us the final result. Again, here, this will be probably the project that will require the most tuning and testing because there are so many AI nods. And the more you have that, the more you have to sort of refine the prompts and just test the outputs to make sure that we're on par with what we want. Okay, so here is the next one, and that's going to be a much more easier version than the one that we just did, which was a lot more complicated. But this one is a pretty simple extraction of information from a PDF. Again, same thing. But from there, we're just looking to essentially uh, output a CSV file and email you know, the CSV to someone with, with that information. So a lot easier than what we just went through. And for this example, I'm just going to use a tool that I've uh, featured in a different video to show you how you can build N88 workflows without knowing too much about N8.8, really. Uh, so this is a custom GPT and uh, essentially just walking you through the whole N8.8 workflow and telling you the different steps. And all you have to do is just to read through it, uh, copy paste what you're seeing, and literally not really even use much of your brain to set this up in N8.10. So that's why I just popped it here. And uh, for the sake of this, I'm just gonna start with a manual trigger. And again, I'm just gonna assume the PDF is coming from uh, Google Drive, but probably if it's a purchased order, it might come from an email. Again, for the sake of simplicity here, I'm just gonna assume this comes from a Google Drive. So actually, let's just say that our trigger is gonna be that we have a specific folder where uh, we're gonna add those PDFs, and every time it's added to this folder, that's gonna be a trigger here, and we're just gonna go through the workflow. So on change involving a specific folder, so we're just gonna watch for a file being created in that folder, and we're gonna be good to go. The next step is gonna be to download that PDF. So here again, that's gonna be another Google Drive and download the file that we had before. Obviously I didn't hook everything up, but that would just be dragging over the uh, ID here. That would be exactly like this. So I'm just downloading by ID and that's the ID from the previous node where we actually uh, get the file. Okay, so next step is gonna be to actually extract the text from that PDF. So I'm just gonna use as I did before, just the extract from file. And here it's from a PDF. And here the next step is gonna be to extract and sort of restructure uh, those different fields from the PDF into something that would be uh, a lot easier to put into the CSV. And again, we're just gonna use a simple LLM chain to do this. So I'm gonna go into the basic LLM chain. Again, same thing here. I'm gonna define the prompt and I'm just gonna get get this one here. If I was to actually do this for a client, I would add probably some examples and just sort of try to refine this. But again, for the sake of this, I'm just going to follow blindly what the assistant is telling me and not really use my NAT knowledge. Again, I'm just going to use ChatGPT 4.0. Next node is gonna be a set node, and you would probably just go through the process here, but essentially we would split this items out into different components, convert this to a CSV, and then we just email the person with the CSV file. Again, pretty much following this whole process that we were looking for. Of course, if this were all clients, I would spend a bit more time before even building the workflow to understand their needs, their tech stack, what they're trying to achieve, their budgets, and sort of the kind of maintenance they're looking for. But I hope those workflows help you kind of understand how to approach those AI automation workflows. If you did and you want to learn more, again, go ahead and watch the videos where I sort of walk you through how to set up N88 workflows without really understanding anything about N88. I think that would be the best first step for anyone starting there. And if you want to get more regular tips and AI automation workflows examples, uh, then go ahead and subscribe to my free newsletter. That's going to be in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.